Hello students. So today we will learn some of the basics which are really required for understanding the microprocessors and interfacing. So we will be going through some of the details like analog and digital system, number system, data, memory, bus, addresses, segments and some part of pages. First is analog and digital. So whenever we have some current or voltage, we will be understanding that in the form of analog and digital. Basically, these are separated or classified in these two. Uh, this can be two different types of voltage that we can represent or understand. First is analog analog in an analog we have a continuous changes in the voltage or will be having a continuous flow of voltage throughout the timing when we communicate that but in a digital form it's a discrete either you have it or you don't so this zero volt is always represented as a zero and plus 5 volt is represented as there is a presence of voltage or 1. So this digital system we will be using in the microprocessor many times. So that is why we need to understand what is a digital. Digital is a discrete, it is a voltage, it's a 0 and plus 5 either yes available or not. These are the only two stages available in digital signals. So when we talk about a microprocessor, we also have uh, or we also need to know a very basic information about the number system. The number system, what we have already studied is binary, octal, decimal and hexadecimal. So these systems or these number representation, data representation methods are used by the microprocessor. So if we have a binary number system that is represented with this particular format like 0000, if a decimal 0 is available, then this, that will be represented with 0000, whereas the octal is represented with 000 and hexadecimal as a 0000. Similarly, it continues for 1 to, uh, 1 to 15. In a binary format, only representation of 0 and 1 in different places will allow you to represent a number whereas in an octal number system we have 0 to 7 these digits will allows you to represent different numbers whereas in hexadecimal 0 to 9 and then a to f these digits allows us to represent any number in a machine so here is the binary we have only two digits which are 0 and 1. In octal we have eight digits that is from 0 to 7 and hexadecimal we have 10 around 0 to 9 and hexadecimal we have 16 digits 0 to f. So this is how the number system is used in the microprocessor. So whenever we say that there is a digital signals available. So these digital signals are available throughout the microprocessor, working, processing, data management, everything. So if we now we understood a binary number system, what binary number system is? Binary number system is having only two digits, either 1 or 0. So this 1 and 0 can be used to represent any number. That is what we have seen in the last presentation, last slide. So if we want to represent this binary number that is 100101. So how do we represent with the in the form of signal that is 100101. Whenever we have 1 it means plus 5 volt or the presence of voltage is exist. So this is how we represent any binary number in the form of signals. And that is known as binary data representation. We understood that binary number system is either having plus 5 volt or 0. It means 1 or 0. 
So this one particular bit, one particular number is represented with a bit where we can store the information. So this bit is nothing but your flip-flop, uh, D flip-flop, what we have already seen. This D flip-flop is having a storage. We have uh, some input and uh, output. Whatever we store here will be considered as memory. I, we can store either 0 or we can have 1. So this 1 or 0, whatever we store, that will be output to your content uh, or uh, to your machine. So this 0 and 1 is this particular device is known as a 1 bit of memory storage, 1 bit of memory storage. So this 1 bit of memory storage is a basic building block of every microprocessor. This is known as memory, 1 bit memory. So if this is 1 bit memory, then we can have this as a 1 bit, this is a 1 bit, this is second, this is third, this is fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, eight. So this eight bits all together known as a byte, eight bits all together known as one byte. So we can store any information here in bit format, 8 bit, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. This is how we can represent any number with 8, D8 locations. So we can have 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 and anything. So that is a process of storing information in the memory. So what is it? One storage space is known as bit. We can either store 1 or 0 is known as bit. 8 bits is equal to 1 byte. This is a complete 1 byte. So 2 bytes is known as a word. 2 bytes is known as word. 1 byte, 8 bit. This is a second byte, uh, another 8 bit, total 16 bit or we can say that 2 bytes, 1 byte and 2 byte is known as a word and 2 words are known as a double word, 2 words are known as double words. But in addition to this, we have here nibbles, 4 bits is known as 1 nibble, 4 bits, 1, 2, 3, 4 is known as nibble. This is a lower nibble, this is a upper nibble. So we have in every byte we have two nibbles. One is lower, another one is upper nibble. So this is how we can represent or we can store a data in a memory. With, with this we will be able to use the information. Information is nothing but a data that we store in the, in the memory which can be further used for any processing. Then what is data? Data is nothing but a numbers. It can be a text, it can be a string, it can be audio song, it can be a video, it can be image, it can be anything which is provided to a computer known as a data. So this is how we can store a data. Then just now we were talking about memory. Memory is nothing but a one bit storage space which can be increased into 2 bits, 3 bits, 4 bits, 1 byte, then a word. But this storage space must be available somewhere, somewhere in the microprocessor. So this storage space in which is available in the microprocessor is known as registers. So we have different types of registers and even different sizes of register. Let's assume this is a, a small register which has 0 to 7 means 1 byte of storage, 8 bit of storage. So this is how we can have. We also have different types of storage spaces like 0 to 15. This is a 16 bit register where we can store a 16 bit or one word of information in the microprocessor. This is a 1 byte. So likewise we can have different types of registers available in the microprocessor. Then what is what is a resistor? Resistor is nothing but a multiple bit storage space. 
multiple bit storage space available in the microprocessor so we have different types of registers so we can name it we can have different names to that we'll see what are the names but you just remember that we have a storage space available in the microprocessor which is known as register then buses just now we have seen we can store the information in the microprocessor or in a computer so we are always expected to transfer the information from one location to another location from one space to another space from one device to another device so this these devices will transfer the information with the help of buses so bus means nothing but a wire a wire with which we will be able to transfer the information from one location to another location this can be a copper wire which is available on your pcb it can be a wire like this or these wires are nothing known as buses so we have to transfer the memory the information from cpu to memory to input output devices input output devices like printer scanner etc etc so this is these are nothing but a lines which allows you to transfer data transfer it can communicate you with the help of lines these lines are nothing but the buses now we understood the information information is a data we store this data in some storage space apart from registers registers are available in the microprocessor but apart from these registers we also have got a main memory main memory means it's a ram so we will store this information in the ram like this this is a data what we store the data as i said it can be a number it can be a string it can be a character it can be a audio file image anything so if we store some information here known as data then we have to use this data as and when required then how to get this how to understand where this information is stored where this so we can understand this information is stored as first place this information is stored at second place this information is stored at third place this is how we store the information so whenever we want to identify where the information is stored we need this kind of indexing so this index allows you to understand where the information is stored so this indexing we can have a different method of storing this is in binary representation as as if i said we will be using complete binary storage in the machines so this is known as the address this indexing system is known as address this is zeroth index this is 000 this is the first index this is second index then this is third index this is where the information is stored and we can make use of this information with the help of addressing this is known as address where this addresses and data is available in a main memory so we have information available in the main memory which will be accessible usable with the help of addresses then then there are different types of memories exist in the micro in the computer so in computer known as microprocessor we have the information known as internal memory or we can say these as registers 8 bit 16 bit kind of is just now we have seen we were talking about that this these memory which is exist in the microprocessor is known as registers we have got a cache memory which is also linked with the microprocessor which is next to your cpu first is the closest memory to microprocessor is register then cache memory then we have got ram and then secondary memory 
so this is a motherboard known as a system board on this particular board we install we have a microprocessor here this is a space for microprocessor we can plug this microprocessor in and make use of it the ram is located at this location on the motherboard we have connected with this particular with these particular links or this particular cables we can connect the to secondary memory so what we have we have first is cpu microprocessor the closest memory to this microprocessor is the resistors then after resistors we have got a cache memory which is linked to microprocessor after cache memory we have got a ram and then we have secondary memory so whenever a microprocessor expect the data to be processed then it get the data from secondary memory to ram then from ram to cache memory and from cache memory to resistors then executes it processes and send back to the same way from where it it has brought and store into the secondary memory so this is how we have a total processing of a computer so with this we understood small basics which are really required for understanding microprocessors and interfacing thank you